let me just start by answering one of the questions I was asked to address, which is what are the key external issues which Unilever has integrated into the uh, kind of core business strategy? And that is very quickly the res resource scarcity picture is the number one thing for us. I think um, you know we buy two thirds of our um, raw materials from agricultural sources. So this whole nexus of of land, food, energy, water, particularly, is 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 the thing that bites first, I suppose, from a business imperative. The second thing is climate change, which is a more um, medium term, if I can call it that, um, challenge, but something we see as incredibly important. Um, population growth, both in terms of how that contributes to those pressures uh, and also what that means in terms of market growth potential, because we are a business, this is a growth agenda for us, um, and we see a world where we're heading for two billion extra consumers, uh, and we as a business want to meet those consumer needs in a, in a sustainable way. Um, and also very interesting, I think, to pick up on Sam's um, chart about people's concerns and this concern right around the world about economic development. There's a lot of talk um, on the fringes of this space about you know, no growth models and should we be abandoning growth. And it's very important, I think, from the Unilever perspective that we are challenging that um, emerging assumption, saying no growth still remains fundamental. It, it's sort of taken for granted in how our economies run at the moment. And we should have the conversation about could economies move to another another system but right now growth is is the fundamental driver for all of this um, so our response to those challenges at a strategic level was to come up with a sustainable living plan so three types of innovation we see around the world there's product innovation this is what we do as businesses really well we come up with new products that have um, you know better impacts or better social value or whatever so this is comfort one rinse as an example of that it's a brilliant product. 85% of all the laundry loads done around the world are hand washes. Typically, people wash with one bucket of water and they rinse with three buckets of water. So this is a new fabric softener, which if you use in your rinse, you only need one bucket of water because it has a special agent in it which attracts all the dirt and the detergent, sinks it to the bottom of the bucket. So if we sold Comfort One Rinse to everybody currently buying laundry detergent in uh, China and uh, Asia and South Africa, we would save 500 billion litres of water per year through that innovation, if we could also persuade the consumer to change their habit to only use the one bucket that they need. So that's a fantastic innovation. It will have a fantastic impact, um, but it's the kind of thing that we do on our own. It's not a collaborative thing. It's not a system change. It's a product innovation. Um, this is a product system innovation about how we deliver um, drinking water to people. Uh, and is a very new departure for Unilever. It's a business model that's based on a, a, an enzyme-based water filtration unit, which doesn't require um, electricity, which means it's applicable in rural areas um, where some of these needs are greatest. But the challenge you have as a business is that that unit that you see there costs between 10 and 30 euros, depending on the model, and the people who really need that unit don't have 10 to 30 euros to spend on something like that. Um, so we need very, again, interesting collaborative initiatives looking at microfinance, looking at getting this into places using development aid in some cases, but then having a revenue stream um, after that is in. And we know that this can have a huge, a huge benefit, and we've set some pretty ambitious goals for rolling this out. But even with stuff like that, particularly on things like climate change, and particularly where we need mass uh, scale uh, and very fast transformations to low-carbon economies, we don't see how this works without some more fundamental changes to the international architecture, the policy frameworks that drive um, how the economy works. And um, there is a conversation emerging that we, we are observing and participating in, which is taking place at a number of international levels and, and, and to a certain degree in, in Europe as well. And that's around, you know, how do we have this bigger conversation? How do we unlock some of the kind of traditional rehearsed conversations that go on between business and policymakers about policymakers saying, well, we want to try and do this, and business says, oh, yes, but that won't work, or, or let's not go too quickly, or, uh, or we might have some vested interests in this particular issue. And it's a real blocker, and we're at a real deadlock moment at a time when we really need some urgency, um, and we need to be thinking very differently about how we have these conversations and how we can engineer a system where there is a, uh, a high and rising price for carbon emissions. You know, that, that is a certainty. It's not something that investors look at renewable energy and go, well, I could put the money in this year, but I don't know if you know, that's going to pay out in, in 10 years' time. We need to give in investors the certainty that investing in those kinds of um, uh, investments and companies internally when they're looking at projects, that they are 
absolutely sure that that's the right place to put their money now because we need to mobilize trillions, not uh, millions or billions even, um, in a very short space of time. So the question, I suppose, is how do we start that conversation? Um, what are the kinds of things that we can do? I think the first thing that we have to do as business is to recognize um, sort of what I said, that what we're doing, although it's very good, isn't sufficient. And I think there are still too many people pretending that it is. And I think that's a big risk. So thank you. Thank you.